Hey gadget groupies, we've got a big one today. Apple has finally upgraded the camera on the iPhone, moving to a higher resolution sensor, which is now capable of UHD video recording. Has the photography experience improved now that we have more dots to play with? Well, let's take a look as we run the iPhone 6S through the most comprehensive camera review available online. Starting with brightly lit outdoor shots, we see fantastic clarity and detail moving up to 3840 by 2160, four times the resolution of HDTV and stored at a wonderfully high 50 megabit per second bitrate. This is preserving excellent color info to complement that resolution bump. Apple is known for very even-handed color saturation and exposure with nice contrast. I loves me a good contrasty shot. And they seem to have avoided many of the overexposure traps which top-tier Android phones can fall into. Happily, you can also adjust the exposure about two stops thanks to this little slider, but it doesn't slide as easily as I'd like it to. You gotta swipe it a bunch to make a large adjustment. Blues, greens, and browns look fantastic. Earth tones and landscapes will be very satisfying to the eye. Yellows in direct sun look really clean. And reds are just on the border of starting to clip, but the phone does a terrific job of reining in the saturation. It's a juicy, punchy color, but we don't lose detail, nor do we see that sizzling overexposure you might find from a Samsung phone where these would start to become magenta. The most problematic subjects in bright light were white objects. This is a tricky shot to pull off on any camera, but we do see highlights clip, which means we will lose detail in the pedals. The focusing system continues to offer a very sure-footed feel in most situations. It slides and locks locks into place a lot like LG's camera system, but I can't say I'm particularly impressed by focus speed. In a controlled test like this, sliding between these objects takes roughly two and a half seconds after tapping on the screen. While focusing is accurate and not nearly as twitchy as what you might find on a Samsung, it's now one of the slower phones I've tested for locking on your subject. Optically, not a lot has changed from the iPhone 6. We've got almost identical lens performance. It's just paired with a higher resolution sensor. A bit disingenuous on Apple's part to refer to this as a bigger sensor. Now the bigger sensor. Now the bigger sensor. Now the bigger sensor. When the sensor size plus lens combination remains virtually unchanged. Macro performance, for example, is almost identical to last year's iPhone and the close focusing distance remains the same. The closer you can get to your subject, the more detail you'll capture and the more you'll blur the background of your shot. More resolution doesn't really help you here. Phones like the G4, Galaxy S6, and even the lowly Lumia 640 are all capable of focusing closer than this iPhone phone. So, bokeh is a bit busy for my taste. I don't think the iPhone achieves the best blur when working close, especially if you're trying to prevent background elements from distracting the eye. Take this pinecone macro. There's a lot more of the trees in the background continuing to suggest shape than on a similar setup with the LG G4. I like the iPhone color and contrast better, but I can adjust the color and contrast on the G4 video. It's a bit trickier to better blur the background on the iPhone video. Using the Galaxy S6 on a street scene, the background is like a watercolor. Even leaves on the same plant are already starting to blur a fraction of an inch behind the flowers. You see this little yellow splotch? That's actually a pair of ugly crosswalk signs. On the iPhone shot, the color of the flowers is a bit more accurate and the exposure isn't as harsh, but more of the background is identifiable and distracting. The yellow signs aren't as blurred away and are more defined shapes, and more of the dead foliage behind the fence is still recognizable. Into a walking test, I'm extremely impressed by the software image stabilization's ability to compensate for my footfalls. There's about as much swaying as you would see from a hardware image stabilized shot, but there's none of that lens jello like you would see on the LG G4. When movement is more deliberate, like walking, I think Apple's solution might actually be better. Occasionally though, when staying still, the software can twitch more than I think is necessary for compensating for handshake, especially when refocusing while shooting video. There's a buzzy twitch which you won't find on hardware OIS. Like on these mushrooms, I've pushed the phone into the grass to steady it, but there's still this compensation twitch happening which you don't see on the Galaxy S6, as the Samsung does not use software stabilization while shooting 4K video. Like last year's iPhone, the stabilization comes with a pretty severe crop, which acts like a short zoom-in effect. You'll have to position farther away from your subject than when you're shooting still photos. This means cameras employing hardware stabilization can shoot wider landscapes or include more people in a group shot. Unfortunately, this crop doesn't give the iPhone an advantage for macro videos as we explained earlier, Samsung's and LG's are capable of focusing close enough to compensate for Apple's zoom-in crop.
Into a proper zoom test, the iPhone sets a new standard for UHD video zoom, producing a better image here than any higher resolution camera I've run through this test. They found a great balance between blowing the subject up and applying sharpening. We don't have quite enough resolution to provide a real pixel resampled zoom, but Apple's approach seems to produce a better result than current Android flagships. Into a street scene, motion tracks beautifully. We see great color and contrast. Greens pop nicely and the sky is a delicious blue. I'm happy to see solid dynamic range. It's expected that white cars would clip in direct sun like this, but I wish the camera was pulling just a bit more detail out of highlights. The freeway test echoes the street scene performance. Good color and contrast, highlights clipping about the same, but the audio here is still a bit disappointing. Apple's noise reduction is far more even-handed than what LG is currently employing, but the iPhone continues to produce mono single track audio. We still don't have stereo sound out of Apple's top tier flagship phone. It just kind of makes everything feel dull, not having that audio information to complement the senior shooting, and it'll certainly impact setups like shooting live music events. Before we leave this freeway overpass though, we should mention that Apple's slow motion video is still second to none. I've been impressed by how smooth the 240 frame per second 720p video is, stunning performance. But now we also have access to a 120 frame per second 1080p as a new option. Absolutely fantastic, taking it up a notch to offer us a higher resolution video which can be slowed to one quarter time or an extreme slow motion which drops us down to one eighth real time. It's one area Apple has decidedly increased their lead over the competition. Now for a transition test moving from a dark scene to bright and back. This is an area where Apple and Samsung continue to leapfrog each other. This year I think Apple might be showcasing smoother exposure adjustments than phones like the Note 5. There's a bit of a shimmer moving from bright to dark that I don't love, but I'm very happy to see that Apple retained the soft transition blooming effect even though the iPhone is now processing four times the resolution of last year's phone. What is a little odd though is for how calm the exposure adjustments are, the white balance on the iPhone 6s seems to have gotten a little twitchier. The sudden shift in color tone as the camera moves from shadows to sunlight is a touch distracting. One additional note on white balance, I was disappointed to see how cool Apple processed daylight shots in shade. This is a little too blue of a look for a shade shot in Southern California, especially for being surrounded by hot afternoon sun at almost 100 degrees in the valley. The tone is off enough to look cold, and there aren't any easy ways to manually adjust the white balance from the camera app. Now for some nighttime shots, I absolutely adore that Apple has refrained from overexposing the scene in low light. It's been a big pet peeve of mine this year to see other phones working way too hard at making dark scenes brighter than they need to. We still get plenty of detail in passing cars and buildings, but we don't lose info in brightly lit signs and billboards. Moving to our creepy tunnel, the surrounding landscape is appropriately exposed. We see accurate color differences between the bluish street bulb and the yellowish bulbs lining the walkway. By not overexposing the scene, Apple is able to keep their ISO lower and noise isn't particularly problematic. There's a fine grain, but we don't have to blur out details in the scene with aggressive noise reduction. Our creepy gate shows Apple erring again towards cooler white balance than what this scene really looks like. The exposure is dead on, but this gate is lit by a really ugly yellow security light, and I would prefer to see more of that color information retained. Our walkway shot mirrors what we saw for the creepy tunnel in this being terrifically exposed and nailing the color temperature differences of the two security lights, which don't quite match each other and drive my OCD crazy. Pushing into a low light shot, these flowers lit by a porch light yards away, the iPhone is just barely able to hold on to detail in some color. Again, the shot is exposed just a bit colder than I would prefer as most of the lighting in this area is warmer. We lose some of the green in the stem and the lavender flowers are blue here because of how cold Apple's white balance leans. While I think LG tends to undersaturate the color in their video, in this shot, the G4 was able to get the color right while also producing a brighter overall scene. Pushing the camera into an extreme low light shot, Apple's autofocus now fails to find these white flowers. The Galaxy S6 also refused to lock focus, but the G4 managed to lock on pretty fast. I can't really fault Apple here as this was a really challenging shot to try and accomplish 
accomplish, which most phones will likely fail at. Moving over to still photos, while the resolution has increased, the iPhone still uses a square-ish image sensor which produces a 4x3 aspect ratio. That means if you want to create a widescreen photo, the resolution drops from 12 megapixels to 9 megapixels. Most screens you'll interact with are widescreen, laptops, desktops, TVs. Even the iPhone screen will pillar box your photos since they're 4x3. And these days, when competing phones use higher resolution sensors like the shooters on LG and Samsung, Samsung, those sensors natively produce a 16 megapixel wide angle shot directly from the sensor without cropping. That's a 7 million pixel advantage for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio shot. The photos themselves follow the same trends as the iPhone's video. Color saturation, contrast, and exposure are dead on. And Apple doesn't fall for the trap of over sharpening their pictures. But I wish I had a softer depth of field blur, control over white balance, and a closer minimum focusing distance. Happily, Apple's HDR mode is a noticeable improvement over competitors. I'm not a big fan of HDR personally, and on too many phones, it usually just becomes a shadow brightening mode. But Apple handles the exposure balancing far better than LG or Samsung. Where appropriate, we'll see the overall scene darken to draw out more structural detail or increase the contrast. If you're going to shoot HDR, this is really how it should be done. Panorama performance is also top notch. Samsung and LG have largely caught up to Apple in providing an easier to use pano feature which improves on stitching, but the iPhone seems to stitch elements together better and faster. This could be a benefit of having 4 million fewer pixels to process on the sensor, but fine details like the power lines in this shot are perfectly pieced together, something the Galaxy Note 5 struggled with recently in our review. As long as you can scan your scene in a smooth pass, you'll rarely see any seams or stitching. In low light situations, the lack of hardware image stabilization means handshake can blur our photos as the shutter stays open longer, though color and exposure is a bit better than when shooting video. This is another area where the smaller image sensor and smaller aperture means Apple is working from a deficit. Take the iPhone's shot of these flowers, for example. The 6S opened the shutter for 1 15th of a second to expose this shot, and it's pretty good. But a similar shot from the LG G4 shows how far we've come with harnessing light in Android land. The larger sensor and larger aperture allows the G4 to soak up more light, but optical image stabilization means we can also hold the shutter open longer. Shooting full auto, the G4 held the shutter open for one ninth of a second, and we ended up with a clearer, brighter, more colorful image with less noise. Even though the iPhone used a faster shutter speed, I ended up with more blurry shots. And to be fair, I know the G4 camera really well, but even with my shaky hands, I only needed one shot to land a clear image. So where's that leave us with the camera on the iPhone 6S? iPhone fans. I'm stoked that you finally have UHD video. Even if you're going to buy the 16 gigabyte model iPhone, don't let any snarky Android fanboys talk you out of shooting higher quality video. Know that you will have to manage your storage more closely as this video takes up a lot more space, but the improvements in detail and clarity are fantastic. How important are your memories to you? UHD video is higher quality video, plain and simple. It will look better on HD screens than HD video will. And then your video is future proofed for when you do own a 4K TV or computer monitor. As a Windows phone and Android fan who's been shooting UHD for a couple years now, welcome to the 4K party. I think you're really gonna like it here. As for the actual quality of image produced, I can't say this feels like a significant update over the iPhone 6. The lens performance is identical. The sensor size is the same. Depth of field is the same. General performance is pretty much the same, which means images created by the iPhone 6S will largely look the same as images created by the iPhone 5S and iPhone 6. They will have more pixels, which helps if you need to crop more, but they won't really look that much different otherwise. In terms of composition, the output from the 6S isn't tremendously different from the LG G3, which was released around 18 months ago. Apple has always had a strong camera game. It's one of the smoothest and snappiest performers you can find. They nail color and exposure, but my criticisms from the iPhone 6 still stand. We won't see a real improvement in camera output until we see Apple start using larger sensors and faster apertures. And then 
will be able to play with softer background blur and better low light performance. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more crazy in-depth camera reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't supporting it by hitting the fan funding, grabbing a free audiobook or a loot crate using the links below this video, or by sharing my videos on your favorite social sites like Reddit and Facebook and Twitter and the Googles Plus, so please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.